everyone. Look, little honey. You okay, buddy? You okay, buddy? Should we go for walkies? If you're looking at this wondering why the hell Hendrix looks like absolute crap and is probably the most ridiculous looking Pomeranian ever, that's because he is recovering from a skin condition called black skin disease. So it's very, very common in Pomeranians. Basically what happens is their coat goes super short and dry and compact and woolly like sheep fur and then it starts to fall out and their skin goes black. So I've been treating it and we're starting to see some results come through. He's starting to have some baby hairs grow through on his chest that you can kind of see here but his fur is also still getting really crappy at the same time it's so frustrating but we are well on the road to recovery i hope i really really hope because he's so cute and i don't want him to lose all of his fur but i'll still love him even if he does Hedrick, sit. Good. Ah. So my PT has got me skipping at the moment. So we do 10 minutes, a 10 minute skip. This was my first go at it. He wanted to put more cardio into my training routine. Definitely not gonna be able to do the whole 10 minutes. Just off time because I want to pick up something very special, really excited. So I thought I'd just show you my outfit quickly. So just simply got my wide leg jeans like dad jeans and this top which actually I think I'm gonna change because I look like I'm naked oh my god can we see how much my eyes are about to start streaming ah, I'm so just walking through Hyde Park because I was like it'll be really nice to walk in Hyde Park this is so nice right oh my god my eyes Ugh. I've never really suffered hay fever growing up, or at least I didn't realize, but like last year it really hit me. Okay, I wanted to show you what I picked up. So this is like quite an exciting unboxing. This is something I've wanted for a little while. I'll start unboxing actually, right now, and then explain. So the bag doesn't really give too much away, but I'm thinking that the box Mines. So I have been after this particular bag. Well, sort of this particular bag. I was actually after the white version, but it's like impossible to find. And also like on websites like Farfetch, their pre-love section, which I personally do find to be very inflated prices. They are selling like the white version of this bag for 11,000 pounds. I'm not spending £11,000 on that bag. So they're like, they have their pre-love section full of things. So um, yeah, let's open this box. So I went to a place called Luxury Promise to get this and they sell loads of pre-love designer. So they're really worth checking out. This is the second bag that I bought from them. So I hope I've got it the right way. Yes, I have, okay. Ta-da! Here we are. So the really awesome thing about this is it is a very, very like sort of like subtly off white color anyway. It's a very light beige. So this is a vintage classic flap bag in a very pale beige with your 24 karat gold plated hardware. I do believe that the modern classic flaps don't have gold plated hardware so i might do like a little bit of a comparison between mine so it's in a really good condition so this bag is like circa 1991 to 1994 which means it's like 30 years old and it's in incredible condition for vintage and it's lambskin as well so lambskin is the leather that everyone's like oh my god don't buy lambskin because it scratches and tarnishes and wears so easily i my black lambskin bigger flat bag is in such good condition. If you take good care of it, it will last. So, and I also, I love the caviar leather. So that's like the more like mottled leather. I love it, but I just prefer the smooth lambskin. It's so nice. So let's have a little look up close and open it up. 
turn that completely the wrong way. So this has got its double flap here. And let's look inside. Oh, we've got the dust bag inside which is amazing. Like, look how old school the dust bag is. The dust bag has changed so much over the years. Like, I mean, I guess it should because the price of it has gone up so much over the years. We also have the authenticity card here. The inside's like perfect. The inside is so perfect and it's just so soft. There's a couple of tiny like scratches to the leather and at the back, the only real issue is you can kind of see like a bit of like wear color probably from like jeans or coats it's kind of rubbed onto this but that's something that a restoration job could easily do so i'm so happy with it like i really just wanted one that would be a very very good spring bag also i know so i mostly buy chanel bags now and the reason for this is because i love the the brand i love i love the house of chanel i always have done but also secondly it's because of the fact that they're more of an investment. So like most of your designer bags, I always feel like always lose value. Whereas I have sold three Chanel, three of my Chanel bags on now and every single one of them I've made like a significant profit on. And like a lot of those bags, like one of them I only had for about two months. And it was a, I think that was a vintage one as well. So yeah, most of my bags I have made money on with when it comes to Chanel. So they are good investments, I tell myself, as well, as long as if you keep them in a really good condition. So yeah, you can usually always make the money back on it, if not more. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Yes, they are pricier, but they also hold their value more. So I'm like, it's an investment. It's an investment. I mean, it is an investment. So yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna go because I've got to go to a massage now. So I'm really excited to go and chill out and have a massage. Oh my God, that siren is so loud. So yeah, let's go. Oh, okay, okay. You can see out the window, so. Um, now you're cheering up a bit. Now you're getting back to normal. Um, but yeah, Henny was a little bit poorly last night. He had the shits all over my carpet, which was not fun and he kept getting up. I had to put a pad down for him and he kept getting up and he was just a bit of a nightmare. And you woke me up lots and you woke me up this morning by having another splat all in the corridor, didn't you? You're not allowed on the bed anymore because you're stinky, okay? You're a stinky dog, bad skin condition. So you can't sit on the bed anymore. So I need to update you on something that is really causing me serious issues at the moment. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I had a thread lift a few weeks back around nearly four weeks so a thread lift best thing to do is google it but for the sake of it i will just explain really briefly what it is it's like sutures that like are put under the skin and they basically like pull things up so i had it to lift my brows so i'm gonna do it on this side because it's like a lot better so i've will admit i've hated like i have really hooded brows usually and I always hated it. I bought these like really random stickers, like eye stickers that are meant to sort of like help lift it from eBay all the way from China. They didn't work and they looked ridiculous because you could just see them really obviously. So yeah, they weren't great. Um, so I've always kind of hated it. Ah, I can't pull. I need to get into the topic, uh, the main thing that I'm going with with here. But um, yeah, so always, always, always hated it. So found out about the thread lift a few months back and many of you will know it as like the fox eyes thread lift so it kind of pulls your eyes like very Bella Hadid, Kendall Jenner like outwards like that. Um, I didn't want that, I wanted to like lift my hooded brows. So I did, so it's these like sutures that like get put under your skin. It's not painful having it done because you have local anaesthetic so you can't feel anything. But oh my god the pain after was like the most agonizing thing in the world. I will show you some pictures of what it looked like immediately after as well because it was very 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 crazy and dramatic um but the results are incredible however i am in absolute excruciating pain today not sitting here resting my face that was out not sitting here resting my face like this things feel okay like this but when i like when I scrunch my forehead like that, probably can't even see it scrunching because of Botox. It pulls, like it's like the thread has migrated and gone up into my scalp and it really, really, really hurts here. Like it is so painful. Um, 
it's agony like it is agony and I don't know what to do like I messaged the doctors that did it and asked them and said you know the pain is excruciating like it because it really really is like when I pull like a frown face it really is and it's really taking me a lot to not pull a frown face because I'm a very expressionate person um but yeah so it's really painful and it's hurting so much in general like yeah just resting is fine but then if I touch this area it's very tender so I don't know why it's ended up all the way up here but it's not it's not good it's not good at all so yeah I'm I'm feeling really sore and I messaged them and they just said it might just be healing pains and that to let them know the end of the week if it's no better that for me isn't great because like I said it was excruciatingly painful so yeah I would honestly not recommend this red lift to people I wanted to try it because I was like oh it's always really good to try non-surgical methods to deal with things glad I tried it in a way but like because like it's sort of like at least I'm like not curious anymore but also fuck me it hurts I regret doing it and it's causing me such bad pain it might be nerve damage so like it's so hard because I think it's one of these things that I've I've been very honest about it on Instagram saying the issues that I had with it because I think it kind of comes across like this really like amazing treatment that's super simple but it's not it there's there are complications and there's a lot of pain involved so um yeah I would not I would personally not get this again sadly because I love the results but yeah um I'm gonna I messaged um, Dr. Escher who does my fillers I think he's quite anti thread lifts um, but I did message him and I asked his advice and he asked me if I could pop in tomorrow and he would have a little look at it for me and try and help me out I'm hoping if it's a trap nerve I don't really know what I can do about it I'm not a doctor but anyway just thought I'd update you on that Hi guys, so I wanted to update you on my thread lift. It was a couple weeks ago that I went to see Dr. Esho. They did some radio frequency on my forehead. Wow, sorry, my overlined lips have really been smushed about. They did radio frequency on my forehead, which is like very high heat laser, really good for skin tightening, things like that. But essentially what they were doing it for was to break down the threads and it was really hot and my forehead was very sensitive but then the next day things started to feel more normal and then the day after like any pain that I was getting from that like tugging sensation from my forehead had then changed to like I could just feel it I could feel it a little bit but it wasn't painful so the way I kind of described it to some people was imagine a fish hook someone like with a fishing rod and going like that and then you're like a little fish in the sea and it got caught on your like scalp and then every time you pulled any form of facial expression it was pulling on it and it was like ah, ah. it was horrible so i look back at the video that i took when i was describing it <laughs> And actually it's kind of funny to see me trying to pull any form of face or like have any facial expression. My face is just so completely like motionless. Like when I scrunch my forehead like that, probably can't even see it scrunching because Botox. And at first I thought it was like the Botox that they did also with the thread lift. But I don't think it is. I actually think that that was, that was just, I was so scared of moving my face because of the pain. So I would honestly not recommend this treatment at all. Like, please, I'm actually asking you guys to not go out and get it. So I think for me, no more crazy treatments like that. No more surgery. I fucking hate the downtime of it. Like, I hate it. I'm just, I'm done. And I don't mean like I'm done. I'm never having Botox or fillers again because I, that's, not the, that's not the case. I'm actually going to have some stuff done next week but that's like i'm having stuff maintained i'm having like maintenance work done the same as like you go for infills 
with your nails, you'll go for a hair extension appointments, you'll go for a bikini wax, shit like that. I am, it's like my yearly appointment to have like a bit of filler and stuff done. So I'm gonna have my under eyes done. I wanna see if they'll do like a little bit here. So like, you know, these like lines here, cause I haven't had that done in like two years. And then that's why I absolutely don't need to touch my lips at all. So yeah. We'll see. Um, I'll film that all next week in next week's vlog.